Hello and welcome back to Module 12, Video 2. All right, we're left off with uh, wireless NAND LAN operation. Don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you're all done. All right, so let's talk about the different types of modes. So please write these down. You got the ad hoc mode, that means it's peer to peer. You got the infrastructure mode, and we break the infrastructure into two modes. We got the basic service set, BSS. That means you have one AP access point connecting hosts together, or we got the extended service set, you have, which means you have a, a group of access points connect together. Then you got the tethering. Tethering is when you have a smartphone, for example, with cell data, uh, uh, cell data access is enabled to create a personal hotspot. All right, so hopefully you wrote the BS, BSS and ESS that's under infrastructure. Like I told you, then you got the um, the frame structure. This is basically the same as similar to the Ethernet frame, but a little bit more addresses. We we're talking about your address, the router address, and the destination address, and here maybe somebody in between at the sequence number. So a little bit more field than the um, than the 802.11 uh, 802.3 frame, which is the Ethernet. And then you got the frame check sequence to check the integrity. And of course, the payload, which is the layer three uh, packet. All right. And then we got the CSMA slash CA. Carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. And wireless LAN always operates in half duplex. And because of that, they're always go, there's a chance that a collision may occur. So to avoid that, this is how CDMA slash CA works. Uh, the way it works is the following. First, the CS, carrier sense. It, it's it's going to listen to the channel. The transmitter is going to listen to the channel to see if, there, if, there's, if it's open, if it's sitting idle. The second thing is the host is going to send, once it sees it's clear, a ready to send an RTS to the AP. This is like the airplane sending to the tower, you know, I'm ready to go. Would you let me go? The access point is going to send a CTS clear to send to the host. The tower will tell the plane, okay, you're clear to go. D is going, then the host is going to look around and say, you know, uh, he's going to wait a certain amount of time. Even though they told him to go, you know, the airplane sits around and starts taxiing and checks, ar checks around to make sure everything's okay. And then the host must receive an acknowledgement from the AP. Otherwise, you know, when he when he says transmits data, even though he gives him to send to clear, the uh, the access point has to tell him, okay, everything's good. I got your data. Otherwise, after waiting a certain amount of time, and if you didn't hear an acknowledgement from the um, the tower, the access point, you're gonna have to retransmit. All right. So let's talk about client and AP association. What does that mean? First of all, client must discover the AP. This is how it works. And then you're going to authenticate, and then you're going to associate. Those are the three steps to get to association. What do we mean by associating with the AP? That means the client and the AP must agree. Please write that down. They must agree on the SSID. That means it's the name of the network, the password to authenticate. We're writing these things down and they also need to agree to the network mode are you 802.11 um, a b g n whatever and a security mode is it we wpa wpa2 and what channel settings you know are you operating at 2.4 or 5 gigahertz and what is the channel in there 2.432 or 5.12 you know there's multiple channels for example the 2.4 2.4 gigahertz operates at 11 channels. So you need to know what channel you are in. All right. And you can operate also in this, the discover, the in active or passive mode. Passive mode means that the AP openly advertises its services periodically sending broadcast beacon frames containing the SSID and uh, supported standards and security settings. In the active mode, the wireless clients must know the name of the SSID. So that means you're really not, you're really not broadcasting your SSID number 
but the client sends their SSID. In this way, uh, the wireless client will initiate the process by broadcasting a probe request frame from, on multiple, ch excuse me, on multiple uh, channels. All right, let's talk about the CapWAP operation. All right. So, uh, by the way, there's a lot of good videos in this chapter and definitely in the next chapter on how to configure wireless networks. So I highly recommend you are not the top of student that reads. That's probably a good uh, chapter to look into. Of course, you are reading and I would be doing a disservice to you telling you not to read your book. There's a lot of details in there that we may brush, maybe just brushed over and you have a much better clear understanding and reading is always beneficial to really get the ins and outs. And if you always have any questions on anything that you read, please let me know. All right, so um, having said that, let's talk about the control and provisioning of wireless access point operation. So please write those three, four points down. Point number one, CAP. CAPWAP is an IEEE standard protocol that enables the WLC, the wireless controller, to manage multiple APs and WANs. We're going to be taught, we're going to be working on this guy all of chapter 13. Uh, based on the lightweight app access point, but adds additional security with the data, data grant transmission layer security, the DL. Yes, encapsulates and forwards WLAN clients traffic between AP and the WLC over tunnels using ports 5246 and 5247. I don't even know if you really need to remember all of that. But, uh, and the big thing, what it does is it splits the MAC architecture, the CAPWAC. Uh, what it does is the AP does some work, as you can see right here, and the WAC MAC does uh his own functions so it splits the work between both of them the wireless controller does some of the work and the ap does some of the work all right so please uh take a snippet of this or a screenshot all right the dtls the dtls um provides security for the ap and the wlc it enables by default the secured CAPWAC control channel and encrypt all management and control traffic between AP and the WLC. Data encryption is disabled and requires DTL license to be DTL and license to be installed on the WLC before it can be provided. All right. Then you have the Flex Connect APs, you have the connected mode and the standard standalone alone mode. So with the connected mode, you don't have, you know, you could be connected from the corporate, you know, you have a controller that controls your AP at work and your, you know, your corporate, your headquarters is somewhere else, but over the internet, I can control your AP. That's connected mode. Standalone, nobody bothers you. All right, so those are called the Flex Connect APs. We'll be working on the connected mode, but within the building on the next chapter. All right, let's talk about channel management. So with the channel management, we have uh, to mitigate against saturation. So we, when a lot of people are using the channels, so please write the following down. These are the frequency channels uh, to mitigate against channel saturation. You're gonna use the DSSS, the direct sequence sped spectrum. You know, CDMA uses that technology too, where you, you have a signal that spreads it out over a much faster frequency. Then you got frequency hopping spread, uh, spread spectrum, where you're transmitting from over, over from one frequency to, to another. Um, this is also for security purposes, so no one can jam your signal tap into one of the frequency you really it could go up to 800 hops a sec uh, per second 800 times and then you got the orthogonal division multiplexions you have a whole bunch of frequencies in a single channel that uses multiple sub channels of the adjacent this is the most widely used 
um, OFDM, most widely used in the AG and in the AC, 802.11 AC. All right, the 2.4 gigahertz, the BG and N, they use 11 channels. So if you have access points that are going to be near each other and you need to have some overlapping so users can move around seamlessly, seamlessly without any problems, without any interference, you want to make sure that each channel is on a set, you know, the channel is a set of frequencies. So here's channel one. Channel two says offers a whole bunch of frequencies within channel one. So if you have an access point in channel one and another access point next door that's operating in channel two, channel one and channel two, these two access points will be given out so a lot of the frequencies, a lot of the same frequencies. So there's probably a good chance that someone in that's operating on an access point with channel two and with someone on operating on channel one will be given the same frequency within the same with you know within the same channel and you may have interference. So therefore, if you're going to have a whole bunch of access points next to each other, make sure they are on channel one, six, and eleven. You know, one on channel one another on channel six and another on channel seven as you can see channel one channel six and channel 11 do not overlap any of the frequencies so therefore you you know even though they're adjacent to each other everyone will have a unique frequency within their channel all right so remember that one six and eleven most of the interference happens because of that by the way and here is the um the N and AC channels when at the five gigahertz. So we got 24 channels and the non overlapping. So remember 36, 48 and 60. All right. So write those down for 802 dot. Well, for the 2.4 gigahertz, we got one, six and 11. Write that down. And for the five gigahertz, we got 36, 48 and 60. All right, now when it comes to, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, when it comes to deployment of the wireless network, you really want to put it right in the middle, all right? You've got 300 feet from here to here. Make sure that they're overlapping about, I would say, 30%. So this guy would be on channel 1, 6, 11, right? If you're doing the 2.4 gigahertz, and this access point will be on maybe one because it's far away right one six eleven one and so on so this way there is no interference all right so i'll wait i'll stop right here and then we are going to talk about uh the threats and then we'll talk about how to secure the wireless LAN. all right so write up uh whatever i ask you to and submit them as homework and i'll see you on the third video of chapter 12 that's coming up.